กฤษนะครับเป็นพนักงานมือสอบที่นี่นะครับเป็นเทคนิคเรียนจูริสนะครับก็เดี๋ยวเซสชั่นต่อไปนะครับจะเป็นของคุณชาแชงนะครับเกี่ยวกับซาร์วิสเอสพาวนะครับแล้วก็เดี๋ยวถ้าคุณชาแชงพูดอะไรนะครับเดี๋ยวผมพยายามจะรีแคปสรุปให้เป็นช่วงๆไปนะครับแล้วก็เดี๋ยวตอนท้ายผมจะมาสรุปนะครับจากที่สามท่านพูดไปนะครับก็มีทั้งคุณสกรคุณสุรศักดิ์นะครับอาจารย์บอลแล้วก็คุณชาแชงพูดไปนะครับผมจะสรุปว่าสิ่งที่พูดไปเนี่ยนะครับท่านจะเริ่มต้นกับสมุรีได้ทางไหนได้บ้างนะครับโอเค Thank you for the invitation. So, uh, my name is Shashank. Uh, I'm from India. So, I basically take care of the DevTools for Microsoft uh, India earlier. So, now I'm working with the uh, Asia Pacific of Microsoft, like just like Thailand, uh, and then uh, Malaysia, so Vietnam, Sri Lanka. So, uh, I'm basically an NCP, Microsoft Certified Professional on uh, Application Lifecycle Management. So especially with the EFS, VSGS, Visual Studio, and then I uh, take care of Azure as well as Xamarin. So today's agenda is more on the Xamarin test cloud. So I'll just brief you uh, the complete overview on how we can use Xamarin test cloud for your mobile application testing. All right. So it's, it's not only with Xamarin you can use Xamarin test cloud for like Xamarin application, but yes, you can also use for your Android. It's been developed by uh, developed in your Android Studio, and uh, you maybe you are using your iOS application. Might be developed in Xcode. You can still use Xamarin Test Cloud for the testing. But uh, today's main agenda I will be showcasing is on the cross-platform. Just like you can use Visual Studio for your cross-platform mobile application development. You know, like Microsoft have acquired Xamarin as part of your Visual Studio now, and uh, If you have Visual Studio, if you are a .NET developer having C# -sharp skill, you can still develop your cross-platform mobile application for your Android, iOS, as well as for Windows, right? So uh, I'll not uh, I'll not go into uh, how you can go and develop your mobile applications using Xamarin or using Visual Studio Xamarin, but I'll 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 brief you through how you can use the mobile application for testing in Xamarin Test Cloud, right? So just a, a brief overview about the mobile application, how it's been developed. So this slide talk about uh, how you have, uh, how the mobile application have revolved, uh, the revolution have been done with respect to mobile application. And if you compare it, if you compare it, it's 10 times faster than your PC boom in 80s. When the personal computer were introduced in 1980s, it is almost 10 times faster than that the mobile have evolved that themselves. And you can see here, it's almost three times faster than your social networking explosion. So when you got the social networking like your Facebook, Outcode, so when it was uh, that, like the hit, so it is almost three times than that the mobile application have been evolved themselves. And it is almost two times faster than your internet boom in 1990s as well. So this is how, it's not like Microsoft, uh, so the mobile application have, um, it to come or it's like uh, oh, okay whether it has to be arrived no it's already happened so the mobile application development has already been happened and it's more going very fast and even there is a uh, estimation has been done like in the coming year in 2018 almost 50 percent of your enterprise budget would be spent on your mobile application right so now the era is like mobile first and cloud first so all your applications are moving into the cloud as well as into the mobile application, like everything is coming on mobile. So if you consider earlier, uh, you used to create your web application, desktop applications and everything else. But now all your application is available over your handset, like your phone, mobile phone. Everything is coming, like maybe you can consider it as a shopping cart applications or any online booking, like your movie tickets or traveling. Everything you used to go into the browser, open your laptop, open your desktop, and start entering your URLs in the browser, and you should do that. But now everything is available over the mobile. So that is the uh, era now, like everything is on mobile application side. Then, what are the challenges when we start with the mobile application development? What are the challenges we used to face that? So, first thing is on the, like we call it as a uh, mobile application. So basically, how you do is 
that you have hundreds of applications which are coming every day into the market and you almost have thousands of devices in the market which has to be supported for all your applications. When you develop any application, you have to make sure that these applications would be compatible with all the, almost all the uh, devices which are there in the market. For example, if you consider the Android application, so in Android, you already have so many versions, like you have uh, APA level 17, 19, 23, 25. So all these uh, APA level, like you're starting from your, probably you can take it as a Kit Kat version, ice cream sandwich, marshmallow. So these are the different operating systems. And if you consider in the market, there are a lot of manufacturers of them, like your Samsung, Huawei, LG, HTC. So there are a lot of uh, uh, like competitors you have. And when you develop any mobile application, so you have to make sure that you get compatible with all these. Then only your application would be uh, circulated to everybody, right? And there are there were no proper process to follow that. If you want to deliver your application as fast as possible into the market. There were no proper process to do that. There were no continuous integration, continuous build or deployment into the market. There were, not, there were no much uh, tools to support this process and everything was. When you compare with the, when you, when you uh, take the fragmentation part, so as I said, your application is developed and there is no proper process. If you want to go and develop, if you want to do the faster releases and when it goes to the application side, on the device side, they, it was not so compatible, right? You cannot purchase all the devices. For example, I am developing an iOS application. I want to test it on several devices of iOS, like iOS 6, iOS 5, 7. I cannot purchase all the all the like versions of iOS and I cannot do the testing. Because it's so expensive to buy everything, right? But now with the help of Xamarin Test Cloud and Visual Studio Team Services and Visual Studio, you can do this. The mobile application development can be done on your Visual Studio using your C Sharp language because when you consider the Android application, you might be using Android Studio, using uh, Java as a language, and then deploying on an Android device. And when you're comparing with the, like when you consider the iOS application, you might be using Xcode as an IDE and Objective-C as your language, and then probably deploying on your iOS device. And when you compare with your uh, Windows Phone, so it's Visual Studio, C Sharp language, and Windows Phone. So you normally you end up with three different platforms, three different languages, and three different IDEs you should be expert as in, right? So now in Visual Studio, though, it's like one IDE, one language, and you will be developing for all the three platforms. So that is the uh, that's the main intention of your Xamarin with Visual Studio. So you can develop your mobile application in Xamarin, in Visual Studio Xamarin, and then you can use VSTS, like Visual Studio Team Services, provide you the complete structure about your DevOps story. So DevOps is nothing but starting from your planning till the deployment, you can use entire structure here, from like planning, development, test, build, and then deploy. You can use the process there. And then you have the Xamarin test cloud for doing the mobile application testing that can be done on real devices. Almost 2,000 plus real devices are available on Xamarin Test Cloud. So that is how you can change the world of mobile application. So talking about Xamarin Test Cloud, um, so as I said, so it is the way of automating all your test cases, all your mobile application testing on, on real devices. So just to give you a quick picture about Xamarin Test Cloud, as I said, so you almost have 2,000 plus devices which are there on, in Xamarin Test Cloud, which you can choose and you can just run them on the real devices and you can get all the information like device log, test run, test log, all this information can be captured. What is the app size? What is the time it has taken to run, up, uh, run it on particular devices? All this information can be readily get on your uh, Xamarin Test Cloud. All right, so if you can just, uh, if I just move to the next slide, you can see here, on the right side, you can see you can go and select your devices, right? And on the other side, on the left side, I just zoomed it, so where you have written the test cases. So the test cases can be written in two types. One is either you can write your own Xamarin UI test, or you can use the test recorder. 
Xamarin Test Recorder, you can also integrate with your Visual Studio. You can download and install on your Visual Studio to start recording your structures. So probably at the end of this session, I'll also show you a few clips of uh, how you can use the Test Recorder as well. And these are the steps, test cases steps. You can see the green mark and red mark. So red indicates that the test is failed on that particular step. You can just click on that get a broad uh, of view, like you can go and zoom it out and uh, you can also see the layout of your uh, application, how it has been behaving and everything else on your devices on real time. Also, you can see the, the memory utilization, the CPU utilization during the run and all these things you can also go and understand from your device log, which is already available in Xamarin Test Cloud. So talking about the DevOps story for your mobile application. So uh, as I said, uh, when we when we talk about the DevOps, it's like it's not only a process, it's not only a tool, it's not only a, a people who will be routing you. It is the combination of all your process, people, and tool. So the, the the tool to support the process and the process to be adopted by your people. So that is what it's, it's the combination of all these things which makes your DevOps story, uh, which, which makes your DevOps story. <laughs> And also, when you are talking about, um, as I said, so it is not only from the development to the deployment. It starts from your planning, development, build, test, release, and then monitor. So entire thing I can cover it for my mobile application. And it's not only the script for your mobile application. You can use this VSTS, Visual Studio Team Services, for your web application, Windows application, or it can be a .NET application, and Microsoft nowadays you, you might be knowing that. So Microsoft is not only targeting on the .NET application; it has become open-minded, it has become open source altogether. So you can still use your maybe if you are not a uh, .NET developer, you may be a Java developer, you may be a Python developer, you may be an Android developer, iOS developer. You can still use VSTS to adopt this DevOps pipeline, right? So. Uh, just into the, like, uh, I'll show you the brief on how you can use this. So as I was talking, so you have your Visual Studio or Xamarin Studio or your Eclipse, Android Studio, Xcode, anything can be at the ID point of view. When the developer start writing the code, it's just an editor. They can get the backlog. Backlog is nothing but your task or the requirement which has to be implemented. That can be pushed into your repository. So it can be a Git repository or it can be a TFPC repository that is available in your VSTS, like black backlog, code repository, build and deploy. All these functionalities are readily available within your VSTS tool. It's one single uh, service I can say. It's instead of calling it a tool, it's a service. The name itself suggests Visual Studio Team Services. So you can uh, adopt all these things in one flow, and uh, this is the client. So which way the developer will be editing this code. And then it will be triggered for your build and deployment. This can be automatically triggered. I can configure the continuous integration and continuous deployment where I can have, as soon as my developer check in a code to the repository, my build should trigger. Once the build is successful, my deployment should happen. I can configure that continuous integration, continuous deployment on, on BSTS. Then I can do the app testing by using Xamarin Test Cloud and uh, the beta testing. I can use Hockey app. And uh, Hockey App is a distribution channel where you can distribute it, it acts as in uh, uh, alpha or beta testing. So where you can uh, uh, share it with your internal stakeholders, it acts as an internal app store or play store. So you can share it with your team so that they can use it and they can, be the, they, they can give the feedback. And even if there are any kind of crash uh, happen, so all this crash analytic report can also be captured. And that can be monitored and that can be given as a input to the developers that they go and fix them and the cycle continues so in order to all these in order to do all these things so these are the tools which are required so as i said this is a visual studio or xamarin studio then vsts vsts then xamarin test cloud hockey app and hockey app and it comes to the monitoring section and now in uh, xamarin test cloud and hockey app is almost getting merged together to form visual studio mobile center so Visual Studio Mobile Center gives you the end-to-end -end capability along with the VSTS, like it also provides you the build capability, testing capability, and distribution, and crash analytic reports, everything can be captured within one platform. 
right? So that is still in preview, but uh, sooner it will be available for the public and it will be uh, having the, all these functionalities as well. So talking about, yeah, so far we have seen the Xamarin Test Cloud. So again, uh, just one uh, pick I have just added into showing you how, how the test results would be there and how we can go and see that. You can see how much, how many devices are there, 10 devices, how much time it has taken, and what are the different uh, operating systems. And you can see here, there's uh, all the results of your test cases, whether it's passed, failed, everything is showing there. And the total count, when it's been ran. So all these details you can get to see in the Xamarin Test Cloud. Talking about Hockey App. So Hockey App can give you all the information about how many crashes have happened, what are the uh, like bug fixes you have done, and uh, is there any users? You can also add the users. You can also track how many downloads have been done for your application, and also you can see if there are anything like um, uh, any feedback has been uh, uh, we have received any feedback from the customer. All these things you can go and track them. So this is one of the uh, distribution channel I can say. So we'll see uh, how we can use all these things and uh, uh, how these things will work. So we'll see it in action now. So any doubts in between? Any questions? มีอะไรคําถามมั้ยครับมีอะไรคําถามมั้ยครับมีคําถามมั้ยครับถามไม่ต้องถามใครได้ <laughs> 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 get back to the previous slides ah oh, it's right so that is uh, the ecosystem oh, okay i think it's it okay go down okay ก็คือสิ่งที่คุณชายแชงพูดอ่ะครับก็คือเดี๋ยวคนจะสาธิตเรื่องของอีโคซิสเต็มในแซมบารีนนะครับก็คือจากตอนที่คุณพงศกรและ
you get option in your Visual Studio to start creating your new project in uh, Xamarin. So you can also go and create your Android specific application. You can also create your uh, iOS specific applications from Visual Studio itself by using the C Sharp language. Or if you want to start creating your cross platform application, you can start creating from your cross platform application using Xamarin Forms or Xamarin Native. All right, so uh, for today's demo, I'll be picking up one of the example called as Coffee Tipper. So, and I have connected to my VSGS. So Visual Studio Team Services. So I have created to my, I have connected to my account, which is shashankessin.visualstudio.com. So just have a look. So this is the application. So mobile application development. So I have created a project in my uh, DevOps story so that I can show you the entire DevOps cycle from starting from your requirement to the deployment. Uh, how we can just by click of the check-in or commit, how my build will trigger, how it will be uploading all my uh, test cases to my Xamarin test cloud, and how it will be deployed to my hockey app. We'll see that in action. So just before that, I would like to also show you how this will be run internally. Like this is the core structure where you can see you have the portable class library and you also have the Android project, and I also have the UI testing for my mobile application, uh, which I have done on Android. The structure, if you see, <coughs> it's all like the same. Like you also have the Android manifest file, and uh, where you will be setting up all your code version and everything else. So, for example, if I just go and change to uh, the code version is 20 and uh, the version is 1.8, and you can also set here the minimum SDK version to be done on the Android, so it's 15, and the targeted SDK version is 23. And I have also said uh, it has to go and create a package file, like uh, normally for Android, it would be .apk file. So that is like, I've given the name as com.xamarin.copytip.apk gets generated with the output of the build. All right, so what I'll do is, I'll just quickly show you how my application looks like. So let me just connect to my Android device, uh, physical device, instead of using my app. Like, normally everybody show it on uh, uh, emulator or simulator, so just wanted to show you in real device, because most of the customer, when I go and talk to them, they used to ask, okay, yeah, it works on emulator and simulator. Can it work on real device? So that's the most of the questions I used to get. So, so that's why I thought, okay, I'll show it on my real device, which I have, uh, Android phone. So just connect to my device. And to show you, uh, I'm just using a connector called as Visor, since I'm connecting to my uh, real device. All right, so hope this is visible. So what I'll do is, I just, it has detected here, you can see a Xiaomi Redmi Note 4, Android 6.0 AP version 23. Right, so I'll just click Start. Probably I'll Open this. All right, so it is compiling and it's going to generate the APK file and then it would be deploying it to my device. All right, so we'll see how it will be happening and uh, how my Visual Studio code is going to convert it to my Android and how it's going to generate the APK file. And since uh, my topic is restricted to only Xamarin test clouds, I'll be most of the uh, things I'll be considering on the Xamarin test cloud rather uh, than talking about Xamarin. Okay, it has asked me for the installation. So I'll just say go ahead and install. And even if you go and uh, update your apps, uh, apps, right? So it's going to automatically pop up with saying whether you want to update or you want to ignore. So that option also is already there. All right, so you can see here now it has been launched. And as I said, it's a coffee tipper where you go and choose your uh, types of a coffee and uh, where you go and give the tip. And if you are at the Starbucks, normally the tip could be vanished. So that is what uh, the simple app which I have developed. So you can see here, so you have, like if I go and choose the cappuccino, so the tip is 50 cent and uh, uh, the actual price is $2.50. So it has come total to the $3. So if I'm at the Starbucks, I just toggle it on. So automatically that tip will be off. So that's how we have developed this app. And it's a simple app here. So what I will do is I would like to do some modification to the app. And uh, 
I will just go and enable a few of the things and I would like to do the deployment again. So what I'll do is I'll go to my call list, the tip page, and you can see it's all written in XAML. So I'll go and enable a few of the lists here. Just uncomment it. And uh, for ease of work, so I just prepared everything on any input mode, so I just wanted to uh, save some time out here for the question and answers and all. So I'll also go ahead and change the background color probably. So for that, I'll be using my <coughs> material palette. So I'll just pick some good color for that. So let's say I'll be using some blue color. Copy this code. Right, so I'll just save this and I'll probably de deploy. Just want to show you how it works on your device. <coughs> just turn on. So I think there's some cache problem, so I just refreshed. Oh, it's not working. Oh, okay, something is wrong here. Really. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'll just show you that how uh, it's been affected and uh, what all these have done right now. So probably go and uh, let me just undo the changes. Right, so what I'll do is change the color of my background. Right, so and I also update my uh, version code. Let's say to 20, and then update it to 1.8, save them. So you can see automatically as soon as I do the changes to my uh, code, automatically it's picking up in the changes window. So that is why, because I have connected to my VSTS account, and whenever I do check out a file, so it's automatically uh, uh, detect them, and uh, it will ask just me, okay, these are the changes which you have modified, and whether you want to commit it to the server. So that's what it's going to say here. So what I'll do is, let's say I've done this modification and I want to commit it to my server. So when I do that, it's going to, let's close this off, it's going to trigger the build out here. So this is the project which I've connected. You can see here, Shashank, sn.visualstudio.com and the mobile DevOps. So if I come to my home, so you can see here, so Shashank, sn.visualstudio.com and I've connected to mobile DevOps project. And right now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to commit the changes. So I say, update it, the background color and version code. So uh, I'll say commit and push. So what it's going to do is commit all is nothing but it's going to commit to your local repository. When I'm doing, going to do the commit and push, it's going to uh, commit into the remote repository as well. So I just click on commit and push. And once I do this, so what happens is it, I have configured the continuous integration in place. So it's automatically going to trigger the build at my, you can see here there's a build configured. For my account, so as soon as that commit happened, 
So it's going to trigger a build. You can observe here, updated the background color and blah blah blah. So it has just clicked on that. So it has in, in progress. So what I'll do is I'll go inside that. So if I shan't request it just now, it has saved. So this is the uh, complete structure of your DevOps. So when you do the modification from your IDE and you're connected to your services, which is your team services, it's going to automatically pick up your code and it's going to start compiling on the on the server side. All right. And the best part here is you can see it, everything on real time on the console. And if anything goes wrong, you can also go and make a notice that okay, which task have failed. I'll explain you all these tasks in a while. So this is how you can see here. It has the initialize the agent. I'm using the hosted agent here. So hosted agent would be given from the Microsoft by default. So you get one hosted agent and one private agent. You will get it. And then you also have the initializing the job. Get the sources. Get sources. Nothing but it's going to copy your source code into the build agent and it's going to start compiling. Then the NuGet restore. So if you have any NuGet packages need to be restored as part of your solution. Going to do that, and now it's compiling the particular .cs proj like your Android .cs proj file is going to get compiled, and then it is going to be established test cloud. So these are all the things which I have configured. It's all up to you, like how you configure it. It's about uh, like uh, each individual build definition is different for your case. So Xamarin test cloud, what it's going to do is it's going to generate a .apk file from this output that would be uploaded to your Xamarin test cloud using this particular task. And then you also have, if you want to go and uh, publish your app into your, uh, for example, this is an Android app. If you want to publish it on Google Store, Google Play Store, then you can use this signing and aligning APK files by passing all these information. And uh, if you have any release notes to be up uh, uploaded, you can also use copy task and publish uh, release notes and everything else. So you can see, the Xamarin Test Cloud. So this is what we wanted to, uh, uh, I wanted to show you today. So Xamarin Test Cloud it has done the upload, and now the rest of the things has been completed, and it has succeeded. So with the click of a check-in, with the click of a button from a developer, it has done all my build steps automatically, and now it has been deployed as well. So if you can see the artifacts, it might have generated the APK file for me. So if I just go to the particular build. You can see this is the output, and at the deployment side, you can also see the alpha release is in progress because I have set it as continuous integration and continuous deployment. That is why after the build succeeded, it has immediately started my release. Right? Even you can control that with the approval process as well. And you can see there is an artifact section where you can go and say, I want to see what are the things have been captured. If I just go and expand that, I can see these are the required files which have been copied. I mean, as an artifact, you can see here com.xamarin.copy.apk. So that APK file has generated. I have used Visual Studio, I have used C Sharp code, and I'm developing an Android application, an Android application deploying on an Android device. So that is what we are doing. And we have generated an APK file for that as well. All right, so that file, so this file have generated from the build task, and that build task output is being given, like that APK file would be uploaded to the Xamarin test cloud from this task. So we'll see what are the tasks which I have defined in my build definition. So in the meantime, if you just go and see your Xamarin test cloud, so this is the uh, app actually, copy deeper. So it might have validated and it might have started. You can see here running on four devices. So it has started running. Right? So what I do is in the meantime I just go to my VSGS and say edit build definition. Just to explain to you what are the tasks which I have defined and how you can add them. So you can see here these are the different types of tasks which you can define. Like you have source, you have nuket package and the most important is these two so which I will be showing you now. So it's going to copy the source code from your Repository. So since my project resides under VSTS, so I just pick up my repository name and which branch it has from, everything else. And if you want to do any restore of your NuGet packages, that you can define it here. 
and uh, the CS proj file. So I have just defined from this project, you need to compile. You need to go and compile and generate the output. And it might have generated the output in this location, the dot apk file under the build uh, binaries directory and uh, configuration. On the same location, I have given to pick the dot apk file which is generated from this location and go and upload it on the example test plot. So that is what it's going to do. And even I have specified a lot of in, in, uh, variables here. So one is the example, uh, the team uh, API key, the email ID, and the device ID. So these things, you will get it when you start running your new test run in your Xamarin test cloud. So I will show you that once I go, go into the Xamarin uh, test cloud portal. So how you can fetch this information and how you can pass this. And uh, this will be unique actually. So it is per devices, so how many devices you select, all these things which will be captured on this information. And if you are running on any of your Play Store, if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, share the app, then you can also get it signing and aligning APKs, and you can go and uh, upload it on that particular Play Store as well. And these are all copy task and publish task. And one more important, like I also have specified all the variables here, right? And uh, the trigger. So this is one of the important point. How my application have automatically triggered the build. So since I have set this as continuous integration as enabled, that is why when I did a check-in from my Visual Studio, it has automatically triggered the build. You can see here, build every change to match this branch, match the branch. So it has picked from the dev branch and it has done the compilation. So going to the Xamarin Test Cloud. So as I said, so Xamarin Test Cloud is is available for your trial version. So it's basically a licensed one. So if you want to try with your Xamarin Test Cloud. You can register for free for a 30-day trial, and you can use, you can go and create your new test runs and start using it, right? So uh, I do have a quick video to show you on mobile lab testing about the customer story. I'll show it at the end. And you can see it is running on four devices, still running. So in, in between, so if I want to show you how you can get that uh, API key and uh, the email address and as well as your device ID, so when you go into your Xamarin test cloud, when you log into your Xamarin test cloud, go to the new test run. You can choose if your application is an iOS application, if your Android application, or if you're working on, if you're writing a test cases on an existing app, then you can go and choose your app. Then just like I have done for my uh, coffee tipper. If it is not, if it is a new app, you can just scroll down and you have the new iOS app and new Android app. You can choose them. And say next and here you get almost like 2000 plus real devices it's not an emulator it's not simulator it's all real-time devices which you will get in Xamarin test cloud you can use like all the like different types of operating system different types of uh, form factor different types of manufacturers all these things you can go and filter it out and you can see the lot of tools like starting from your this is since I have selected a uh, Android app, it is showing all the Android specific uh, mobile devices. If you have selected the iOS, it would have shown you like all the iOS structure like iOS 5, 6, 6S, iPad. So all these things, everything uh, would have been shown here. So what I can do is I can quickly go and select a few of the devices where I want to run. So select device and uh, the language and the test series, and keep it as it is. Here what you will get the uh, ID generated. So you have this UI test. If you are using a C sharp language to generate your Xamarin UI test, you can copy this code snippet. In this, this is your uh, API key, and uh, this is your device ID, and uh, this is your email ID. So I have just used uh, Chris uh, email ID. So uh, I'm, I'm just yeah, getting to see the uh, Chris email ID here. So these things you need to make sure you copy it and pass it on your pre definition. As a variable, probably, or you can directly test it. If you are running on Windows, you can choose the Windows, or if you are separate from other operating system, you can choose here. This is for the UI test in C sharp. So, if you are using any other language, like if you are using a Java or Ruby, so you can choose your Calbash. So, for your Ruby, so you can get the code snippet for that. You can get the information like all the device ID and everything that's from here. If you're using any Appium, so for your Java project, or you are using Objective C or Python, you can do it from here, or Espresso for other languages as well. 
So once you're done, just click on done and you get, get started with your app. So since I've already done this, I just cancel this. So once you go to the copy tipper, so you can see here, so it has started running on one of the devices. Uh, sorry, it's, it has remaining one device and three are completed. And once this is done, it's going to give you the results. And uh, you can see the previous results here. So if I just go and run, like in the morning I have run one more. So you can see there are two test cases. One is uh, at Starbucks, I have new test here, Starbucks, and a deep copy tipper. So both are passed, so that's why I'm getting the green color uh, the results of the chart. And it has taken 10 minutes to run, 8 minutes run time, and total device time is 10 for initializing and everything else. So it has run on four devices, four different operating systems, and it has the peak memory is 457 MB, and the app size is 17.9 MB. And even if you want to see in detail, you can just click on that. Or you can also scroll down and see how it's been run and everything else, like what is the peak memory usage and everything else. And you can just click on one of the devices and you can see the, okay, how it's been run, what are the different devices, and when I just, these are the test cases. So I can just click on the test steps and it's going to automatically show me. For example, you want to see individual devices, so I can just click on that and see them, like how it's been running, right? So this all, uh, like the, Screenshot is not in real time, it's running now. It has been already completed and it has taken the screenshot for you. And even if you want to go and see the device log, you can just click on that device log. It used to take you to the, all the scenarios, how much it has been run, and all the information you can gather from here. So the testing has been completed. Yes. Yeah, so since I have used uh, his email ID, he have already received the email notification. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if I just come back to my copy tipper, so you can see here, I'll just complete it, 3 or 2, just like giving me my ISD time. So it has run here, so with the new configurations and new information, everything. And these test cases can be written in your Visual Studio. So if I just come back to my Visual Studio, I do have the test cases written here. So you can see here this is the test.cs. So I have written two test cases here. You can see one is the tip copy test and the at Starbucks. So these are the two test cases which I have run on your Xamarin test log. So since I am using C sharp language here, I have written it on Visual Studio. And uh, there are two types of written, writing that will test UI test cases, and it also uses your end unit framework, testing framework here. And uh, you can use either by hand, hand coding, or there is one more way where you can go and develop, uh, uh, create your test cases is through test recorder. So if there's a sample test recorder available, you can start recording your uh, scenarios, and it, in the in the back end, it's going to generate a code for you. All right. So that is this, these are the two different ways of generating the UI test cases for your uh, Xamarin. And once this has been done, so the test has been completed, so and the deployment, let us see what happened at the deployment side. So if I just go to the releases, in the releases, what I have done is, uh, the, at the build stage, I have defined the Xamarin test cloud task, and at the release, I have, de I have defined my deployment as hockey app. So it has to go and deploy to my hockey app, so if I just see that, I think the deployment has succeeded. So if I just go inside that, say environment. So here I have defined task deployed to hockey app. And I have specified the details and the output of the file, the APK file need to be uh, deployed into my hockey app so that the end users, like as I'm doing the alpha and beta testing, so those users can be added into my hockey app and I can share the application with them they can download that APK file into their mobile devices and they can start testing on that, they can start using it. So, and also I can go and track them how they are doing and uh, how much uh, download have been done, what is the crash analytics reports, everything I can see that. So the release has been successful, you can see that 10 minutes ago. And if I go and connect to my hockey app, so I'll just log into my hockey app. Okay. 
So once I go and log into my Hockey app, so this is, this is my application which I've already deployed here, and I will see the latest, uh, like the latest version and the latest date. It's going to show me. You can see the latest version of the code is 1.8 and uh, the 20, and you can see it has been deployed just recently, and you can also go and track. Um, how many downloads have been done, how many crashes have been done, all these things you can go and track them. So just to show you, uh, now it's showing it as zero, right? So I want to go and download the latest version. So I can just click on that, and I say download from the private page. So you can see here, so this is recently been launched, and um, so this has been deployed, so this is the release notes which I have. And I can just click on download. So it gets downloaded to my local machine from where I can also share it with everybody. And once I do this, so I can also get a track that I have a one download for this particular uh, version of the app. So everything I can capture, and if I give any feedback, that will also be saved as a traceability for me to see, okay, what is the feedback from the customer, what I have to see. And uh, there are a few other configurations which you have to do with respect to adding it to your uh, like your app ID and this app ID and uh, API tokens, everything need to be added into your code as well to start with your hockey app. Uh, so it's, it's almost being done. So you can see here, so there's a one download is happening. So a one download has been done for this particular app. That is what's showing. And how many releases per there, how many versions which we have developed on this particular app. So that's all in the track. I can get it from my hockey app. So so the, the, in order to summarize the thing, so we started from the uh, requirement, let's say, I, I didn't show you the planning at all because it's not that much useful as of now for this particular uh, session. So we thought, okay, I, I started from my Visual Studio for my application using C-Sharp, developing a Xamarin application for Android, and then we generated a local build and we deployed on the physical device, and then check tested everything, okay, it was working fine. So now I want to distribute to everybody that too through automatic process. So what I did is, I, my developer had done modification and they have uploaded, updated all the data. Then they did a commit, which in turn triggers a build since I have connected to my BSTS. The build uh, is successful. It has generated the output APK file. And the, uh, that output APK file has been uploaded to Xamarin Test Cloud through the XTC uh, task which I have defined within my uh, build. And then uh, once the build has, uh, once the testing everything has been successful, it is also deployed to my hockey app. And then from the hockey app, everybody can go and download that, whoever I have added into my uh, community. And uh, now uh, the latest thing is, as I said, the mobile center. So mobile center have the capability of your Xamarin test cloud, and as well as your hockey app, it's all integrated together within one room. So where you can go and uh, do the build, test, and uh, like you can also share your code, like collaboration. So all these things you can do it on mobile center. That is something which is new in now. Uh, it is under preview, so which is new. Uh, you can see here. This is the mobile center. So it is uh, it's still in preview mode. So you can see where you can go and manage the like, continuous everything. All your automated process can be done using this uh, mobile center. And uh, you can also build your best mobile application using Visual Studio. And uh, you can also have your uh, end user to go and start using all your things. So it's it's like the combination of your Visual Studio and uh, Visual Studio Visual Studio Team Services and your mobile center. You can do everything else. Any questions? Yes, please. So the question is about uh, the, this company is developing the APK file, so can it apply to uh, either Visual Studio or Mobile Studio? Yes. yes. Right. You can. Even if you are not using PSTS and from there, you can still upload it as a directory. There are two approaches. Either from the ID, you can do that just by installing your uh, like a sample test code. You just need to register for that, or you can also do it from your command line. There are two approaches. But yes. Yeah. 
เราไปไปเจอใช่เราเพราะว่าเพราะว่าสุดท้ายแล้วอ่ะไฟล์ที่จะไปอยู่ในสัญญาชาวมันต้องเป็นไฟล์ APK ถ้าเป็นเนี้ยในในมือ Android แต่ว่าอันนี้คือคุณชาแชนก็พัฒนามาจากที่เป็น Visual Studio แล้วใช้ Sublime เป็นด้วย C ชาร์ปกติถ้าจะทำ Android ใช่ไหมต้องใช้ Java ใช่ไหมครับเลยแต่ว่าอันนี้คือเป็นอีกเวหนึ่งที่ใช้ Sublime จากตัว Visual Studio พัฒนาด้วย C ชาร์แล้วได้ไฟล์ Native เป็นต่อ APK แล้วเอาไฟล์ APK ไปทำใน Sublime Desktop ถ้าเป็น Sublime Desktop เป็นไฟล์ APK ไฟล์ก็เป็นแบบนี้เป็นไฟล์อย่างแล้วเราอยากอัปโหลดตัว Script Test Script Test ไหมตัวเทสต์ไอเดียด้วยเทสต์ so the question is about how can we download uh, sorry upload the testing script on the server test cup yeah uh, that's what I said so you can do it from your IDE as well like Visual Studio also provides I mean if you are using Visual Studio you can just right click on your test script and say run it on um, uh, run it on your Xamarin test cloud if you have already registered your Xamarin uh, test cloud if you have the license for So if we use uh, another you can, ID, like uh, you can still use that from there. I have one ID. คือจาก ID ก็ได้ก็สามารถทำได้ก็คือมันจะมีขั้นตอนของมันคือที่ที่ที่ทำอยู่เนี่ยคือเวลาผมเทสเนี่ยผมจะเทสยากจะเทสไม่เกี่ยวกับ ID เขาเลยเขาเลยเอาเฉพาะ APK เขามาหลักเทสอย่างเดียวมีผลทำได้เยอะขึ้นโซเดอร์ทูอินส์วันนี้ใช้ยูซิงยูไอดีหรือจากคอมมานด์ไลน์อไม่คอมมานด์ไลน์ไรท์โซถ้าคุณทำจากมือถือของคุณอย่างเช่นคุณมีไอดีของคุณในมือถือคุณคุณสามารถเลือกที่จะใช้ที่นี้คุณสามารถกดที่ปุ่มที่เขียนว่าใช้ที่นี้หรือใช้คอมมานด์ไลน์ก็ได้หรือจะใช้จากตัวแล้วก็ไปแล้วจะเป็นการเรียนรู้ที่คุณจะใช้ที่นี้ในการเรียนรู้ที่คุณจะใช้ที่นี้ในการเรียนรู้ที่คุณจะใช้ที่ Using the device in the code. ก็คือส่วน IDE ก็ส่วน IDE อะครับแต่ถ้าสมมติว่าเรามี test script ใช่ไหมครับเราก็สามารถที่จะไป manage ด้วย command line หรือจะใช้จาก Visual Studio เข้าไปในตัว summary test ก็ได้คือ command line ใส่ equipment ใน cloud เขาใช่ครับใช่ครับ So even the the same thing you can also do it from your command line. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yes. 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 How how? Oh, it's. So, it's not just. 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 It's not The iOS part in the Hockey app. So what's the user download? Is there any limitation of number of downloader? No, no. Uh, because the, the main idea here is to get the information. The no device is there, but how is is there any limitation for the number of devices? Actually, yeah. how it will be considered is if you download from one device, it will be considered as one download. If you try to install multiple times, it won't consider that downloads. But if you are doing it for different devices, it will be considered as like number of downloads will start increasing because the main idea is to share with your everybody, right? So it's, it's I'm tracking how many downloads are there for my application. So there's no restriction as such. Yeah, correct. It's just like uh, normally we use your Play Store or uh, App Store for your mobile application for your iOS to iOS or Android, right? Like when you go and see how many downloads are happened. So 
normally you used to see in your device for 10 million downloads, 5,000 downloads, something like that. So the same way you can consider this as an internal app store or play store. It's just for your alpha and beta testing. ว่าต้องชี้แจงก่อนว่าไอ้ฮอกกี้แอปนี้มันเป็นแค่ตัวมันมันไม่มันไม่ได้แทนที่พวก Google Play หรือว่า App Store ของเราใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่Okay. So, I do have last, uh, I mean, some uh, two minutes, two videos are there. Just I'll play that and then I'm done. Right, okay. so this is about the Xamarin. Like about Xamarin is that it is a platform and a tool, not only for code development, but also for analytics, also for test quality, which is test cloud, because we have the cloud solutions, and it's going to be uh, completely bulletproof uh, for the Beyond 12 team. Once it goes live, uh, failure was not an option. If you're doing manual testing, there is a lot of room for error, especially as your app becomes more complex and starts to use more features on different operating systems. We were unable to go manually test and review how the application looked and flowed on each of those devices, so there were numerous cases where uh, uh, especially visual issues like buttons being overlaid that were uh, addressed very quickly through the Xamarin Test Cloud. If you think about speed to market and high quality, this is a tool that's allowing us to do that. We chose the Xamarin Test Cloud because we wanted a way to scale our testing across many different devices and many different apps. And we also wanted a way to automate testing as much as possible. The test Cloud allowed us to write over 250 automated tests to test uh, over 90% of the application in an automated way. This means every time that we're creating a, a new feature or fixing a bug, we're able to run those regressions on a wide variety of devices, way more than we could ever do manually. The test Cloud was for us a real game changer. Our release cycles could be become really, really short. Instead of doing a week of regression testing, we could just put it inside of our Nike builds, get results back from that, and if something broke, we could easily fix that. We can say with confidence our release is stable. We know Saturn Test Cloud is there to support us in order to check if everything's still working. We pride ourselves on having a really great score. 90% of our reviews are four star or more. You want to make sure that when you're releasing an app, it has as few bugs as possible and works for the largest number of people as possible. So Xamarin Test Cloud enables us to release feeling confident that that will be the case. So this is about the customer story which they have defined about the Xamarin Test Cloud. And the last but not least, so I would like to just show you. Xamarin Test Reporter makes it easy to record automated mobile tests for iOS and Android, helping you build beautiful, high quality apps by catching bugs before your users see them. Turn on Test Reporter and record interactions with your app, including essential gestures like tap, swipe, app navigation, text entry, and even device rotation. With one step, you can upload your test directly to Xamarin Test Lab, our industry-leading mobile testing service with global market share data and over 2,000 devices across multiple platforms and operating systems. Review beautiful, easy-to-use test results for fast, accurate visual comparisons and capture detailed diagnostic and exception data to fix test failures before you release your app. Recorded tests are written in UI tests our C-sharp unit testing framework, empowering you to customize tests, put them in source control, and run them locally from Visual Studio and Xamarin Studio. The Xamarin Platform, Test Cloud, and Insights provide a complete set of mobile development lifecycle tools to build, test, and monitor world-class mobile apps. Learn more at xamarin.com slash test cloud. Right, I think uh, you got a better picture out here now. Okay, so uh, I'm done with my uh, session actually. So, any questions I can answer? If not, probably we can wind up. Any questions so far? All right, so thanks a lot. Thanks for joining today. Okay.